Hello and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract and this is our fourth tutorial so if you haven't seen any yet then you should go back and take a look at number one, two, and three. Woohoo! So we're dealing with Zim at zimjs.com and we're seeing how we can use the features from Zim in Adobe Animate. Uh, Zim is based on CreateJS and has lots of conveniences, components, and controls. You can see about Zim here in the About Zim, and it talks about it, uh, a little bit about the site, um, a little bit about the features, one line, drag and drop, multi-touch, pan, pinch, zoom, multiple types of hit tests, styles, we can use styles, uh, and a whole bunch of other ones, as you can see there. Uh, the reasons why to use Zim, but you probably know that. If you're using Animate, then it's along the same lines. We're making interactive media. And I've been making things in Flash for many, many years, and before that, Director, so building with this all the time. I love working on Zim in the canvas. And if you guys need to use Flash for various uh, movie clip animations, so be it. But otherwise, you're, of course, welcome to just come out and have a look to see if uh, you might just want to use Zim and not even have to use Adobe Animate. <laughs> it's up to you. There are many people that are making hundreds of apps for their companies, uh, dozens of people employed, all working in Zim. There are people converting a lot of things that were made in Flash previously into Zim. Uh, and so, yeah, you know, come on in. Check it out. But let's go into Animate now and see a little bit about Zim Animate, which is kind of funny. Uh, where can we find that? Under examples here, under collections, we made a little mini site right here called Animation, which features a few of the uh, animation tweens. So we've, we've got tweening, and much like you would have in Flash or in ActionScript or in GreenSock, etc. And so here are some of the basics where we can animate to absolute positions, animate to relative positions, animate in a series, animate from locations, wait, and you can click any of these to see how the series are, are created uh, or how the where the weight comes in. So there's loop weights and rewind weights. Um, here's a sequence animation. So these are some of the basics, but there's also, uh, there's also some animations on paths that I think we popped into at some point and animating on paths can be really powerful. So here we're animating along a path. We just animated and changed layers as we're animating, as we get farther back. Also, as we get farther back, we're slower. As we're closer up, we're faster and we're brighter and bigger. And all of this is on a path that is editable. So you see that? Ramp, ramp, ramp. Okay, so these are some of the extra things. There's also shape tweens, although your uh, animate's really good at obviously shape tweens where you can set all that, but we, we do have shape tweens here as well. Where are some examples? I think up here. Mm -hmm. uh, there are shape tweens. One neat thing is, uh, for instance, this is a, a squiggle that can be moved about here. There we go. And if I hit reset, we just animated back to the, the, the reset there. And that was back in Zim 10. And why don't we go there now? We can animate to sound as well. So that's another thing. But let's, let's go into uh, Adobe Animate now. And we will start a new file. This was our last one that we made. File. Another way to get the Zim template is just sort of copy the last file that you worked on. But we'll go through the new template thing again. And that would be right from here. Give us a very high. We're on a web. Very high. Create. And then we don't have, unfortunately, don't have the save profile. So we go and we import that again. <laughs> a little bit annoying, isn't it? And there it is imported. Still don't have that profile, but uh, it brings in the Zim shim. And that's what we got from a zip file that comes from the Zim shim for Adobe Animate. But we're good to go now. We'll bring up a code page here and let's animate something. So there's another thing that we haven't shown you yet that's, that's handy when you're doing uh, 
code in Zim, and that's the way that we handle parameters. So say we're going to make a new rectangle here, like so. We could pass in normal parameters, um, like 100 comma 100 red, um, and dot center that. This, by the way, we will say that we are Zim tutorials, and this is going to be 04 on animation and config config objects. So we save this up and we'll save it roughly as the same thing that we just wrote there. Zim underscore zero four underscore animation FLA. And let's have a look and see what we've got so far. So there's our our our, our rectangle. Now let's make it a bit bigger. 200 and 200. And say we wanted to put a rounded corner on that. Well, you would go to the docs, the Zim docs, and you would have a look. Uh, why, don't, why don't we do that? So here's the Zim docs right here. So on the Zim site, and then hit docs. And if you type in rect, it'll jump down to rectangle here. A width and a height, a color, a border color, a border width, and there's the corner. So we'd have to put in null or undefined for these two if we didn't want the if we wanted the default border color and border width, which there there isn't one. So we put in a couple nulls and get to there. And in some cases, like a button, for instance, so down below, there's a button. Look at how many parameters there are for a button. Lots. So what if we wanted to get to some roll icon or an icon? We'd have to. That's a lot of nulls to get to. So that's unmanageable. So we invented Zim Duo, the Zim Duo technique, where you can put in individual parameters or a configuration object, an object literal, that has the property names and the values. So there are the parameter names as properties and the values. So let's see that uh, live here. For instance, this is a default rectangle, just a black rectangle like that. If we wanted to jump directly to a corner, we could go squiggly bracket corner colon um, 30, end of squiggly bracket, and go control enter. So that's called a configuration object. What we did is we we jumped directly to the corner parameter, and now we have a, a, a rounded rectangle in a sense. By putting an object literal instead of, of normal parameters. So if you provide one object literal, then Zim will assume that you want a configuration object, and it will set the corner to that. Yay! Pretty cool, huh? So other, other frameworks have that ability, but then it's only that ability. As far as I know, there isn't a framework out there where it could be either. And for us, it's not either all the time, but it's either any time it makes sense. So we don't always do this, but uh, any time that we've got enough parameters, we'll introduce this. And it's called the Zim Duo technique because it was introduced in Zim version 2, Zim Duo. And so if you look in the docs, it will say, hey, this supports Duo, and that means that you can do it this way. So most, most of the uh, components and shapes, etc. all support it. All right, well, I did want some size in there, which means we'd go to a width of 300 and a height of 300 and then a color. So the drawback is if you wanted to do uh, more parameters, then it becomes just a little bit longer to start typing that stuff in and a color purple, comma, and However, uh, we can drop that down like that. It becomes nice and easy to look at. So it almost is the same as saying, give me a new rectangle uh, or const rectangle equals a new rectangle, rectangle.width equals, rectangle.height equals, rectangle.color equals, rectangle.corner equals. So it's the same almost as setting properties afterwards, but we don't have to keep on saying rectangle.rectangle rectangle, 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 rectangle. <laughs> We can just put them in there. It's also very similar, isn't it, to the flash um, panels up here for setting, I can't even remember, it's been so long since I've used flash, but I think for setting button components, it would, or button things, it would allow you to set these things up in a little panel here. So we considered adding that, um, the 
uh, we considered adding uh, a, what do you call it, a GUI to Zim, like a graphical user interface to Zim so that you could do that. And we tried it out and we said, well, wait a minute, we're, we're rebuilding Flash here. We don't want to do that. So uh, we just dropped it and left Zim is all code and Flash is all, uh, you can use the ID if you want still, you know, so there you go. But we found that we, when we, even when we were working in Flash and ActionScript, most of the time we were working only in ActionScript and we didn't even bother with, with panels and stuff. It is nice to have, to lay out things and certainly like that. But now I've made hundreds of things without having the Flash ID or the Animate ID. So it certainly can be done. Anyway, there you go. There's a rectangle centered that will have the corner and be purple. And now when we see that, sure enough, that is the case, which is good. So let's do this promised animation and we can chain that on the end of this. So here we chain center dot animate. And in here, uh, the first parameter is what properties we're going to animate. And so the first parameter properties, we could animate the alpha, alpha to zero, for instance. And then we can say how long we want to do that. If we want, we could do it in one second. So let's have a look. This is a little bit troublesome because of the way, uh, whatever. I have not quite learned how to demonstrate and code at the same time. There may there might be a way that we do that in Flash, but it's not quite as easy. So there it is, animating when I hit the refresh. There it is, animating to an alpha of zero. The next parameter after that is the ease. So it might be better to choose something other than alpha. How about we animate the scale? Um, to, well, we can animate it to 0.5, so half is big. We know what's going to happen, though. All we've done is centered that rectangle, and that rectangle has a registration point at the top left corner. So this won't look very good. Mm -hmm. So there it is, scaling to its registration point. So center reg would be the better solution there, and then it centers... Uh, the registration point therefore centers the scale like so. But what if we wanted to loop and rewind that? Well, the next one is the ease and we, we can do eases like a bounce out, for instance. And that looks like this. Boing, 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 boing. Okay, those common eases that we all know from uh, Robert Penner equations and so forth. And the next one after is what function to call when it's done. So this is some function to call when it's finished animating. And that function, well, if we call an arrow function here, that function can receive the target or whatever is actually animating. Or indeed, if we stored the rectangle in a variable, we could then use the variable in here. But here is what it looks like uh, if we say, change the color to red, so target dot color equals red. So it's going to bounce out, and when it's finished bouncing, it will then change the target to, to red. Uh, when we refresh here, <laughs> there's your preview. Finishes bouncing, changes it to red. So that's the callback when we're done animating. But there, there's all sorts of things. And then I don't know when we're going to get to rewind and loop and there's re rewind weights and there's weights and there's so many, many parameters to animate as well. So at this point, if we want to get to a rewind, so I'm going to get rid of the target stuff. Well, I'll copy this and we'll remake it. And we'll leave this bit commented out. Oh yeah, uh, comment selection. Okay, so down below here. If we want to change this to the Zim Duo techniques, we're not going to bother with the bounce out. And, and what we've got is that, I guess. Okay, so that's animating the scale in one second. Let's have a look. Animating the scale smaller in one second. 
If we want to convert this to the Zim Duo technique, can I do that here? No, I can't. Okay, so I'm used to working in Atom. So we put brackets around it all like that, squiggly brackets around at all. But then we have to say that this is the props parameter, colon, and this one is the time parameter, colon. And often we'll drop this down so we can see that a little bit easier. Okay, so we're using the Zim Duo technique. And when I write a little comment here, Zim Duo. Okay, where we've gone to the name of the parameter and its value, name of the parameter and its value. Then the order doesn't matter, and we can simply say rewind, colon true, and loop, colon true. Well, let's just do the rewind first, and you can have a sense of what that will do. Goes down, comes back. Goes down, comes back. And you can have a call for when that's done, but if we want to loop, then loop, colon true. Of course, you could do just loop on its own, but that won't look quite as good. So here we have the rectangle then uh, both rewinding and looping. Okay. We can animate color. So in here, in the props right there, the reason why it's op an object literal is because there might be more than one prop. So we could animate the color to red. And then you get this. We can animate the rotation dot rotation to uh, 180. And then you get this. No, oh, it is looping. Um, etc. Okay. So that's in animate. Why don't we leave it at that? There's a lot more features to do with, with animation. But rather than have a big, long uh, tutorial, I think that sort of gets across the general idea at the moment. And we can look at some more fun things as we go. We'll probably see more animation in the future. Uh, yay! I am Dr. Abstract. I'm this little fellow. Well, <laughs> I'm saying this little, little fellow because I'm used to having a little icon of myself there. But th that's actually me. That's a picture of me, a full-out picture of me. There's Pragma there. I, I have a matching little uh, Dr. Abstract icon. So anyway, there I am, uh, Dr. Abstract. Please join us, zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. And you can ask any questions you want at the Slack channel. We are at Slack, in Slack, we have an animate channel specifically. So I uh, hope to see you there. Ciao. Have a great day or night. Bye-bye.